You've probably driven on a road that's fallen apart after just a few years. Potholes, cracks, crumbling edges. Modern roads seem designed to self-destruct. Meanwhile, Roman roads built over 2,000 years ago are still being used today. What did Romans know about road building that we've forgotten? Turns out they treated the road construction like military engineering because it literally was the military road machine. Roman road building wasn't a civilian construction project. It was a military operation run by professional soldiers who knew their lives depended on good infrastructure. Legionnaires didn't just fight wars. They built the roads that won them. Why use soldiers for construction? First, armies were free labor that you'd already paid for. Second, and more importantly, Roman legionnaires were constantly building roads wherever they went. They built roads through enemy territory to move supplies and troops quickly. Road construction was a core military skill, not a specialty trade. Every Roman soldier was part engineer, part construction worker. When they weren't fighting, they were building the infrastructure that made the next victory possible. The Roman Road Bible. Romans took road building so seriously they wrote it into law. The laws of the Twelve Tables, basically Rome's constitution, included specific road construction standards. Not suggestions. Laws. Roads were legally classified into three types. Public roads, 20 to 40 feet wide. Private roads, 8 to 13 feet wide. And country paths. Public roads had government inspectors called Curator Viarum, who made sure construction met legal standards. Imagine modern governments caring that much about road quality. Romans treated roads like national security infrastructure, because that's exactly what they were. The engineering masterpiece. Roman road construction was ridiculously over-engineered, and that's why they lasted. Modern roads are built to minimum standards to save money. Roman roads were built to survive the apocalypse. The process started with surveying and planning routes as straight as possible with wide turns. Then came the real engineering. First, workers dug a trench three to five feet deep for the entire road width. If the terrain required it, they dug drainage channels at the same depth to prevent water damage. Then came the layers, and this is where Roman genius showed. Bottom layer, large stone blocks for foundation. Second layer, gravel and crushed stone to fill gaps. Third layer, sand and small stones, compacted solid. Top layer, fitted stone paving. Plus, drainage ditches on both sides and stone curbing. The entire road surface was built about 18 inches above ground level with a slight crown so water ran off to the drainage ditches. This wasn't just road building. This was fortress construction for traffic. The water problem. Romans understood something modern engineers often ignore. Water destroys roads. Every aspect of Roman road design focused on water management. The multi-layer structure prevented freeze-thaw damage. The raised profile and crowning prevented pooling. The drainage ditches and stone curbing channeled water away from the road surface. Even the foundation trenches included drainage to prevent groundwater undermining. Modern roads fail because water gets in and destroys them from underneath. Roman roads lasted because water never got the chance. The network effect. Roman roads weren't just individual routes. They were an integrated system covering three continents. By the Empire's peak, Rome had built over 250,000 miles of roads, connecting every major city from Britain to North Africa. This network moved armies, but it also revolutionized trade. Merchants could transport goods across the entire empire on wide, high-quality roads. 
Rome's postal system used relay stations every 10 to 15 miles to send messages at up to 50 miles per day, faster than anything until the telegraph. Mile markers showed distances to the nearest city. Monuments and shrines marked important battle sites. Roman roads weren't just transportation. They were the physical manifestation of Roman power and culture. Why they're still here? Many Roman roads are still in use because European cities haven't moved. London was Londinium, founded in 43 CE. Paris was originally the Celtic settlement Lutetia, destroyed and rebuilt by Romans as Parisii. Geneva was Celtic Genava, captured and rebuilt by Romans in 120 BCE. When Romans conquered territory, they didn't just build roads to existing cities. They built new cities connected by new roads. That urban layout has remained largely unchanged for 2,000 years. The Appian Way, built in 312 BCE, still carries traffic today. Not as a museum piece, as a functioning road that has been continuously maintained and used for over 2,300 years. The modern road, shame. Roman roads outlasted the Roman Empire by 1,500 years. Modern roads often don't outlast the politicians who funded them. Why? Romans built roads as permanent infrastructure for empire management. We build roads as temporary solutions to immediate problems. They over-engineered everything because they expected their roads to carry Roman traffic forever. We under-engineer everything to meet minimum standards and save money. Roman road builders were soldiers whose lives depended on the infrastructure they created. Modern road contractors are businesses trying to maximize profit on government contracts. The Roman legacy. Roman road engineering principles are still taught today. We just don't usually follow them because they're too expensive but Roman roads prove that spending more upfront costs is less over time. Every time you hit a pothole, remember, Romans figured out how to build permanent roads 2,000 years ago using hand tools and muscle power. They understood that infrastructure isn't an expense, it's an investment in civilization itself. The roads that built an empire are still carrying traffic while roads built with modern technology fall apart in decades. Makes you wonder who really knew more about engineering. Sometimes the old ways really were the best ways.